Okay, so we're making progress on our Paul's Pet Palace website. By now, you should have changed every single one of these files to use the includes, the footer include, the head tags include, and the header <coughs> include. So I'm going to click on like portfolio details. You can see that the very top line is the head tags. And then I'm leaving the body here. You could actually put it in one of the tags if you wanted to. But I'm leaving it there just to kind of show and prove a point that um, we understand kind of the structure of things. The, uh, the header include. And then we're leaving the content as is for every single page. And then we come down. <coughs> and after the end content, we have the footer include. So that's the portfolio details. If I take a look at typography, the same thing is true. And then I come down to the very bottom, and there's that. Okay? So now, as I take a look at my website, localhost PPP, um, I take a look down at the bottom, and there's some data here in this bottom, which I'm guessing lives in the footer section. And if we wanted to be sure of that, all I'd have to do is right click, view page source, scroll down to the bottom, and then we can see here's the footer section, the end of the footer, the beginning of the footer. And here's, you remember, we briefly talked about the footer has a bunch of links in it and it was .html. We're actually going to be changing those. And then here we have company name, echo rights, the website template by eGrappler and all that. So this stuff is all living in the footer include file. Let's make some changes to that. So here's the footer include file. And the first thing I want to do is I want to get rid of website template website by um, okay so what I want to do is I want to get rid of this URL eGrappler and I'm going to replace it with simplystreet.com and replace the visual link to simplystreet.com. This is a domain name that I own, That and I'm going to add a colon right there. And so let's just save that. So let's just save that, and um, save. Then go back to our web page. And then if I refresh the page, and then now you can see website by Simply Street. If I click on that, it takes me to the Simply Street website. I've done nothing with this website. <laughs> I've had lots of dreams and plans for it, but nothing's happened to it. So, so that's happened there. Um, so this, this is a little better, but now company name and this copyright. We want to make some changes to that. So what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to open up the config inc file, the config include file, which has nothing in it just yet. And I'd like you to add the following code. Now I'm cutting and pasting, so I'm cheating a little bit. And I'm defining a bunch of constants. And I'm also even going to define copy year. And uh, that'll be 2015. So now, in your reading, you should have read about naming a constant in all caps, and I'm defining company name, company street, company city, company state, company underbar zip, company underbar phone, 
slogan and copy year. And um, so I've got those defined and I'm going to save it. I'm going to come back to my footer page now and where it says company name I'm going to add some PHP code, embed it right into the HTML. So if I go PHP, there's the beginning of my tag, and I always like to do my tags the beginning and end first. Now I can build PHP code. Now what's interesting here is I could actually have 30 lines of code in there. If I wanted to, I could hit enter, and I could do all sorts of coding here. Um, because from this starting point to this point here, I can put as much PHP code. It doesn't care about spaces. It doesn't care about colon, um, carriage returns and things like that. But I'm only putting a little bit of code in. There. And basically, I'm going to do an echo statement. Echo, then in caps, company, under bar, name. So now, it should display the company name. And I think and right here, um, the pound sign, let's just add index.php. That way, it will take us back to the front page. Um, and right here where it says 2012, I'm going to cut and paste this tag and put it right here and change company name to copy year. <coughs> okay, now I'm going to save that, but What's happened is this config.include file, nobody knows about it yet. So I'm going to go to my head tags file, and I am going to put right up here before my title, I'm going to put my, my config file include. So if you remember, what we did was we had an include file, so I can... Um, Let's just pull up my index page just as a reminder. There's the syntax for an include. So now I am in head tags include right after the head. And I'm going to include config.include. There's a reason that I want to put this configuration include file very, very close to the top. And it's going to be related around this in a couple of minutes. But basically, now what's happening is when a page, like index or typography, uses the include head tags include, the head tags include, the first thing it will do will consider the config include. And the config include will put all of these variables, these constants, into memory. Now they become accessible anywhere else in the program like way down in the footer include file. So let's save everything and let's see if it works. So I'm going to refresh. Oops, uh, let's go localhost. Ah, oh, yeah, I wish I was feeling better. PPP. Now, if I come down to the very bottom, what do I have here? Copyright 2015 Paul's Pet Palace. And it then and the link also works as well. Comes back here. And now if I go to another page, so say for instance, if I go to typography, scroll down to the bottom, 2015 Paul's Pet Palace, all rights reserved, website, whatever. Now what I might also want to do is take advantage and put my um, location information in my um, in that bottom footer section. So let's do that. So what I'm going to do is I want to put it on the very next line. So I'm going to let's see, go 
problem is I've got a very small area displayed for the video that I have to move things around. Notice here at the end of the H tag, I'm going to add a hard carriage return. I'm going to hit enter. So this way the website by <coughs> simplystreet.com is still there, but then I've got a carriage return. So now I'm down on the next line. <coughs> As a matter of fact, I could do this to make it a little more obvious. Now I'm down on the next line. And then what I want to do is add some more PHP code in here. PHP and then let's close uh, and let's add some echo statements in there and what I'm doing And I don't, I think here, Company Street, I don't want to have carriage returns. I think what I want to do is just put a comma there. As a matter of fact, just a couple of spaces. And then, let's then the back here. This was from another website. So I'm just going to add change of that. So now, what I've done is on the copyright line, I got the copy year, I got the company name, I've done a carriage return way over here. Right there, got the carriage return at the end of that line. And remember, HTML doesn't care about um, double extra spaces. If you wanted to, like here by website, I just hit enter. Now all of a sudden, I can actually see everything together. That's almost a better thing to do there. And now um, I've got the carriage return. I've got some PHP code that I've started. And I'm calling the co echoing the constants this of company, the street, city, state, zip, and the phone number. So now if I save this, wrong button, save that, come back out. And here I'm on the typography page, and if I just refresh the page, I'm getting an error, and it's giving me a clue that, oh, I got an extra character in there somewhere, so let's see what I <coughs> messed up. Oh, right here. A little typo there. There we go. Let's put the PHP, ta PHP tag correctly. Save it. Come back and refresh. Now notice, I've got the copyright tag and all of that, and now I've got my main street and my phone number and things like that. What I could even do is add the word phone, and then um, And then I could even copy this if I wanted to. Oh, if, for phone, what I need to do, because that's an echo, I need to um, concatenate this. I need to make sure I put quotes around there. So I can add the phone to that. And if I wanted to add just a couple of spaces, and I will go fax. Um, company fax. Now what I've done is I have um, phone, the literal phone, the constant phone, the actual phone number, <coughs> the word fax, 
Now let's save it, and I'm perp hopefully you're understanding what's going to happen, what error I'm going to get in a second. Refresh the page. And notice here, company facts assumed undefined constant. Okay, so we got a nice little error there. So that should be pretty easy for us to fix. Let's go back to our config, and let's just add. I'm going to copy company phone. Add fax, and let's change that one number to five. And then let's save this, come back to the page, refresh it, and go down to the bottom, and you can now see that we have the phone and the fax number down there. And um, that's pretty good. I personally, the more I'm looking at this, I don't like how that looks. I really, I don't like how that looks and what's interesting is here every single page I go to that changes there the same format and everything's the same <laughs> now think about it back before you understood PHP and PHP includes if you had a website of 20 pages and you didn't like how that looked you would have to go to every single page cut and paste and make the changes I'm going to come up with something a little nicer. I just that just doesn't feel right for me. So let's take a look at what we're going to do to this footer include page. So uh, first of all, what I want to do is I don't like this copyright year and stuff being right at the beginning. I'm going to X that out. And I'm going to put that just down at the bottom. Then what I'm going to do is this website by. I don't like that code either. Right there. I'm going to X that out. And I'm going to put that on the same line as the copyright. Now let's take a look at that. I've made a couple of, oh, matter of fact, all rights reserved. I didn't like that there either. So copyright, I want to take this all rights reserved, control X, and I wanted to put that right here. So now let's save this. Go back to our page and refresh it. And notice here we have Copyright, all rights reserved, something's not right. Oh, that's got on that line, so I need a carriage return down there, and I think I'm going to be in a little better space. So now, right here, before the copy, I'm going to add a carriage return. And I'm going to save it. Refresh the page. And still not liking the way I, it worked out. What happened here? Boom, 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 boom. I probably need another one. There we go. It actually gave me two. I don't. Maybe it didn't save the first time. I don't. It probably didn't save the first time. Let's save it again. There we go. That looks good. So now I have all the contact information. This is a little um, hard to read. And what I want things to do is I want a couple of things to pop out. And so what I want to do is I want Paul's Pet Palace to pop out. And I want the word phone and fax to pop out. So I'm going to come back here. And where it says right before here where the company name is going to be, I'm going to add a strong tag. And I'm going to, put, I'm going to close the strong tag. <coughs> and then let's go right before... In, inside the quotes, 
put a strong tag, close the strong tag, and inside the quotes for the facts, put a strong tag, and then close the strong tag. So let's save that. Come back to our page. Refresh the page, and now that popped out. It's a little dark. It's a little bigger, not much, but uh, and there's other things we can do to it. But basically, adding a strong R B tag helps. Now the other problem we have, if you remember correctly, is elements portfolio. These links are going to the old HTML pages, so that's still in our footer section here. So index, we know we want that to go to ind the home page. We want that to go to index PHP. Now what I'm going to do is elements, I'm going to change to cats. Portfolio, I'm going to change to dogs. And then I'm going to change to birds. I'm going to change the pricing to birds. So that means I also have to then change these pages. And we don't have these pages yet, but we're going to. Cats PHP, get rid of portfolio four columns, and change this to dogs PHP, and change the pricing to birds. PHP. And I strongly suggest all of your um, page names and everything you keep in solid lowercase. Don't upper or lowercase, and in Windows, don't use spaces. Just nice single words and um, in lowercase. Now, blog HTML, that's been converted over to blog PHP, and contact HTML has been converted over to contact PHP. So now if I save this, refresh the page, now notice down at the bottom, I have cats, dogs, birds, blog, and contact. Contact still works. Blog gets me to my blog page. Birds throws me an error. <coughs> dogs is going to throw me an error. And cats is going to throw me in there, and I'll hit back here. Because those pages don't exist yet. <coughs> Let's worry about those in a couple of minutes. And then the home page does get me back to my, my first page. Now, a couple of things I don't like. So first of all, we're not in the Brownie page business anymore. If I right-click on this, I can see that I have an image called I can right click on this brownie and I can do a save image. <coughs> I'm going to save this right to my desktop. And it's called Logo PNG. On my desktop, On my desktop, I now have a logo PNG file. If I right click on it and look at the properties, I see that, let's see, de under details, I see that this file is 240 pixels by 51 pixels. And if I double click on it, there it is in the body. Now you have two choices. One, what you can do is you can create a PNG file using Photoshop or whatever editor you like and make your own file. Just make it the same size as 240 by 51. Um, you can do that, or you can replace it with text. I'm going to take the e and honestly, what a lot of people would do is create a new global PNG file to make it work however they want.
But we're going to take the kind of the easy way out right now, and we're not going to do that. So now, where does our logo file live? Our logo file lives in the header section. So let's go back into NetBeans. I'm done with footer. I'm done with the config for a while. And it's in the head tags. Um, no, it's actually in the header. And let's close. I'm closing everything up. And I'm going to include the head <coughs> header include. And we see right here. This is where the logo PNG file lives. So I'm going to move a couple of things around just so I can understand what's going on better. And I see that I have a tag, a, um, an href, a link tag with the image living in the middle of the tag. This way, what happens is Whatever page I'm on, if I click here, I'll always get back. Uh, matter of fact, that's going to an index.html page right here. So the first thing I would have to do is change that to PHP. Let's change that to PHP and save it. Refresh the page. Let's go to a page. Now I click. And now it's, no matter what page I go to, it's going to take me back to my index page. But what we want right now is we don't want to deal with um, that image, that image page. So we're gonna we're gonna comment this out for now. We're gonna comment this code out. So now that line of code won't work. And to prove it won't work, I'll save it. I'll come back here. I'll refresh the page, and notice that brownie is now gone. Whatever page I'm on, this logo is gone. So right off the bat, now we've already started making progress towards making it look a little better and not the brownie template. But now let's copy this line of code that we just commented out. Get rid of the comments. And in the middle of this h tag where the image is living let's get rid of that and let's just put a simple echo statement and I'm going to try it with an h1 tag with it and see what happens so now I have some HTML, an H1 tag. I have no idea what it's going to look like. I have some PHP code referencing the company name constant. And I'm going to save that. Refresh the page. And what's happening here is because I can see Paul's Pet Palace, but because of the tag, the color of that, it's a dark brown. So it's not liking that too much. Um, I'm going to need to do some CSS inside of that tag to actually make this pop because the H1s right now are this off-color brown. So I'm going to have to do a little quick um, styling in line. Okay, so because we have brown on brown text, as a matter of fact, when I mouse over this, you can, I can actually, I can barely see, I don't know if you can on the video, Paul's Pet Palace, and I mouse over, I'm actually getting an underline because it is a link. But I can't have a brown text on a brown background. So what I'm going to do is right here in this H1 tag, I'm going to add an inline style. And um, if you've taken um, Web 2, you should understand inline style tags. So we have the H1 tag with a style, color being equal to white. Or you can make it whatever you want. And you could add other, other styles as well in, in here. So I'm going to save this. And now, when I refresh the page, now I'm having the white text. 
Now, um, there's other ways to do it. I could have made a special class for the H1 called Title H1 class and things like that. But this gets us where we want to go. Now, if I go to the pricing page, uh, Paul's Pet Palace is still there. If I go to the blog page, the contact page, any page I go to, the company name is now still there. And also down at the footer, all the footer changes are still there. Did you notice something though? Look at up here. Up here we have this brownie. And this up in the tab, this is happening because of the title tag. So let's take a look here. I'm back in the header include file. And if I take a look and um, well, oh not header, I need to go to the head tag. Sorry, head tags include. The head tags include right here. The word brownie is still in there. The reason I had us put the config ink is because of this very thing right here. So now what I'm going to do is get rid of the word brownie. And then I'm going to add our little PHP tag. to echo the company name. And matter of fact, I'm then going to put a colon there. And then I'm going to echo right after that the company slogan. And there's, you could have combined them all and things like that. I think this is going to work out the easiest. So let's save that. Let's go back to, excuse me, and refresh the page. And now, notice here, it says Paul's Pet Palace, and you're starting to get the tag. This little icon right here, this little icon that's a little um, piece here, that is um, because of uh, Favicon. And if we take a look, I'm going to go to... E colon da, 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 da. XAMP HTT Docs Paul's Pet Palace. There is no favicon in there, so what's happening is it by default it takes the favicon icon file, which is this guy right here and uses the default web server one. So I'm going to pause for a minute and I'm going to get a favicon file. Okay so as fate would have it I found a favicon ICO file and um, when I actually went to run it and, um, and, and do it it did not um, work as expected. So um, I need to do a little more research um, just to make find out what's going on there. Um, notice that I still have the XAMP favcon in there. And it's got to be something with the server. I'll find out. But if you do a Google, if you Google F A V I C O N favcon generator. There's a bunch of online generators that will allow you to make a ICO file that you're supposed to be able to put into your home directory and then that icon works. But I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it right now. So let's go back here. Localhost. Looking at PPP. We have the constant in our name. We've replaced the image of the logo, the logo.png file. We've replaced that with Paul's Pet Palace. And the other thing I wanted to add to that, <clears throat> let's go into NetBeans real quick, is uh, in the um, header include file, I want to add Let's take this information right here, this H1 inside the link. And let's make this an H3. 
and an H3 here. And let's change company name to company, uh, company slogan. And I'm just guessing. Let's save that. Come back here. Refresh the page. And it didn't like that. <coughs> Header include. Um, let's look at the config file. Oh, I just had the word slogan, so it was a typo. It usually is common errors. So we'll just change company slogan to slogan. Let's save that. And then refresh the page. And then where pets rule. Uh, don't totally like how that all looks, but the point, you've got the idea and the point. I probably wouldn't use H1 tags. Let's see. Um, what happens if I get rid of the H3 tags? And I just put a BR here. I'm going to save that. Okay, yeah, that's even worse. So, um, so let's keep the H3 tag there. We can worry about making it pretty later. <coughs> Again, excuse me for this coughing. I got a feeling allergies are starting to kick in. And there we go and then save that okay so what we've done is we've changed the logo section we've modified the bottom here modified the footer information every single page has that we've created dead links to cats dogs and birds and one other thing i want to do on this video is pages and portfolio this is important information because we don't want to lose these pages, but we're not going to use them a lot. So let's go to the menu code in NetBeans. So I'm going to open up the menu code. I'm going to close everything down. Open up the menu code in NetBeans. And there's a lot here. <coughs> and notice under pricing and then under portfolio, and here the pages section has links of pages and then there's a pricing section as well underneath there so this is going to be a little tricky but I think what I want to do is um, right after this 404 page here I think what I want to do is I want to hit enter And then I want to copy this portfolio right here from this LI, this portfolio link, to the end of this portfolio link. I'm going to control X, and I'm going to put it right there. Now what I have is a link underneath the pages with a sublink setup. And these are all fine. And then up here, elements, typography, and single block. Those are um, those are all living under pages. So that's good. So let's um, go up now here to the very top line to where it says home. And let's copy this home line. Oh, didn't mean to do that. Let's copy this home line three times. Control C. One, two, three. Cats, dogs, birds, and change the page references to cats. dogs and birds 
now what we should have is um, a home link, a cats, a dogs, and a birds link, a pages link with some sublinks underneath there. to tighten things up a little bit so let's save that now come back to our page refresh the page now I have home cats dogs birds pages blog and contact excellent and to make things just a little cleaner and a little better for me let's take this blogs and contacts these two links here cut them and put them right here. Now, what I have here is this section here is all of the um, the pages section. And so, watch what I can do here. This will be nice is that I can keep that here. I'm going to refresh my page. So now I am home, cats, dogs, whoops, homes, cats, dogs, birds, blog, contact, and pages. I have the pricing. I have the pricing stuff there and the portfolio stuff there. Now, the reason I, I want to add that, keep that to the menu is because I want to be able to reference it and see how it looks sometimes. But when we go into production with this, and we're going to use it for real, what I can do is a simple beginning a comment statement there, and then ending the comment statement here. So by commenting out this HTML here and saving it, coming back to my page and refreshing it, notice that the pages section is gone. <clears throat> and now I just have my main website. Everything still works responsively the way it should. My footer information down on the very bottom is working the way it should showing showing nicely I think we're in pretty good shape now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to NetBeans and I'm going to uncomment this out because we're still in development mode and that what this will do will allow us to reference those pages and see which pages we like. So we've covered, and so I'll save this, refresh the page, and now you can see that the pages information is there. So we've covered a lot in this lesson, and we've started to implement um, constants. We've played around with a little CSS, not a lot. And we've um, changed our menu. We have cats, dogs, and birds pages we need to create. We'll base that upon um, some of the existing template pages. And I think you're starting to get a good understanding and a good idea <coughs> how PHP, with using includes and constants, can really be your friend. And we haven't really done any database type stuff yet. Um, because quite honestly, just understanding and getting a good handle on your template at this point is really important. So what I would like you to start thinking about is your final project. Do you have enough information now that without the database elements, thinking about where database elements are going to go later, that you can start thinking about creating a structure and a template for your final project? If you do, uh, do the Paul's Pet Palace so we can keep building this, but then from here also um, start thinking about how and what you want to do with your final project and start implementing server-side inc um, PHP includes and constants because now what happens is we really can change every single page very quickly 
by just changing one section. All we have to do here is change the footer section in every single page. That changes. All we have to do is change a couple of things in the header section, and that changes. Another thing we are going to do, and if you want to, um, we're going to actually create a slider include. So if you want to go ahead and jump ahead, on the index page, you'll find the beginning and the end slider tags. Cut that and put that into a slider include file. And then what you can do is you can create slider 1, slider 2, slider 3, slider cats, slider dogs, slider birds, and put your own images in, in those as well. So um, next video we'll create cats, dogs, and bird pages, and we'll fool around with the slider page as well. Okay? Thank you, and have a great day.